SEC Media Days are right around the corner. We got 1010 XL's Frank Frangie here. Frank's going to be heading up to Nashville. Look, this is kind of weird. SEC Media Days have never been in Nashville before. They kind of started this when they went to Atlanta, shifting right, the right. location around a little bit. It's going to be a little weird, a little different to have it in Tennessee this year. They had it in Birmingham forever. It started in 1985. I think I've been to 33 of the 37. So they started in Birmingham, had it there for a long time. Moved to Atlanta for one year, then back to Birmingham, back to Atlanta. Now Nashville, next year Dallas. So they've moved them all around. But it's kind of a rite of passage in college football. It's on. College football's on once the media days happen. That's right. I've been to a bunch of SEC media days. I'm going to be a little upset that I'm missing this one this year. But Frank Frangie and Tintin XL will be up there all week with plenty of coverage. So, Frank, uh, let's start with the Florida Gators. Yeah. What do you want to hear from Billy Napier and the players that he brings along with them when they kind of take that podium as we kind of start to set the stage for the season? Well, I can tell you this, Jamal. In all the years I've gone to this thing, all the years they've had this thing, I think the expectations are lower for the Gators than they have ever been. I can't ever remember a time when so little was expected from the Florida Gators. They're going to be picked probably uh, fourth or fifth in the East. That has never happened. If they're picked lower than fourth in the East, it'll be the first time ever. I want Billy Napier to talk a little bit about Graham Mertz, his new quarterback. I want him to talk a little bit about where he thinks this thing's headed, because I think that's important. They'll be faster defensively. And how do you deal with the expectations? Look, they've got to play uh, FSU, they've got to play Utah to start the season, and they play a rugged schedule in the league that includes LSU again, always includes Georgia. It's a tough go for the Gators. How's he going to manage all that? I think that's first and foremost. Now, you said expectations are low for the Florida Gators. Yeah. Expectations definitely high for the Georgia Bulldogs. They're going to be there as well. Kirby Smart going to have a few yeah. uh, tough questions that he'll have to answer as well. But, I mean, when you're back-to-back -back national champions, there can't be that many tough questions, right? Well, well, the questions Kirby's going to have to answer are the ones he doesn't want to answer, right. and that's about the off-field stuff. Football's going well. They've won back-to-back -back titles. They're going to have a chance to win three in a row. Carson Beck, the former Jacksonville player, the Mandarin High player, is going to be their quarterback. But here's what happens with coaches at Jamal, and I see it all the time. When things start going well, people look closer. When things start going well and things go not so well off the field, all the speeding, uh, then you're going to have to answer those questions. He's not going to like it. But he's going to have to answer questions. Your football team's doing a good job. Uh, you're not doing a great job off the field. Now, look, I think Kirby's a pretty sharp guy. I don't, I don't think that's problematic. I don't think that's going to sta stand. I don't think that's an identity of the program. But he's going to have to answer those questions whether he likes it or not. All right, now the SEC as a whole, big changes are right around the corner. The additions of Texas, yeah. the additions of Oklahoma, getting rid of the, the, the different or different sides yeah. of the division coming all together into this one. There's going to be a lot of questions about that. How do you think all the coaches are going to handle that? Do you think most of them are going to be happy about the change or at least say they are? Yeah, they've talked about it before a little bit. Everything changes. This is the last year of divisions, obviously. It's the last year before you go to 16 teams. Uh, I, I think there'll be a lot of talk about the, the schedule. They're going to they're gonna wind up playing still eight conference games next year. I don't think that's going to last for very long. But I think a lot of people think this is the last year. It's like it is now. So let's try and win it now. I can still remember when Florida went when they went to divisions in 1992. So the last year you didn't have to win your division and play in a championship game was 91, and Florida had never won the title. And I remember how important it was to Steve Spurrier to get it that year, and they did. They won their first official title then because next year it became a championship game. So this is the last year of this current incarnation. I think people will talk about that. All right, one of the last things they do at SEC Media Days each year is the media poll yeah, for the yeah. expectations of where teams will finish. Let's do the Frank Frangie poll. Frank, where do you think uh, George is going to finish in that yeah. poll way too early, and where do you think the Gators are going to finish? Yeah, I'm going to go way out on a limb here, Jamal, <laughs> and say Georgia and Alabama are going to win their divisions. I know that's really, that's really risky, but that's what I think, even though LSU's got a good football team. <laughs> I think Florida is going to come in fourth at best in the East. I think Tennessee will be ahead of them. I think Kentucky will be ahead of them. The question then becomes, where is South Carolina and Florida? Is Florida fourth and South Carolina fifth? Is South Carolina fourth and Florida fifth? But I'm telling you, it's histo they will be historically low. People have fewer expectations of the Gators, really, than they ever have. All right, we'll have to keep an eye on that. SEC Media Days get underway on Monday. Frank, thanks for being here. Okay, Joel.